Hello everyone, welcome to my channel where we talk about things we love like gaming, shows, and anime. So originally I was planning on turning this list into a top 10 as always, but there are actually a lot of characters in the DBZ universe that have not been playable in video games. Now I'm not talking about character supports or strikers where they lend their help during a match. No, I'm talking about playable characters fighting as these guys. Now I know Dragon Ball Heroes has a huge roster of playable characters, and some might even be included in it, but that's an RPG game. You're not technically in control of the character, only his or her commands. So without any delays, let's begin. So for starters, we got Paragus, Broly's father. I know he didn't exactly fight in the movie, but he was a survivor and he did kill others to get what he wanted. I mean, this guy had Broly in control. He survived the destruction of planet Vegeta and an attack made from King Vegeta. I assume King Vegeta's attack was supposed to kill him, but he pretty much proved that he can take King Vegeta's attack. We've seen a random Saiyan get killed by King Vegeta, so I assume he's not that weak. I'd like to play as Paragus. Maybe he, his ultimate special would be sending Broly towards the opponent, and the opponent has to try and avoid Broly's hits, which would be near impossible, but doable if, if Broly calms down after about 15 seconds of a beatdown. Next, we got Bardock's crew, all except for Bardock and Fasha. We've seen Bardock in almost every game lately, and we've seen Fasha in Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi 3, which was a neat surprise. But what about the rest of the group? These guys are Saiyan warriors, Bardock's crew. These guys had to be put down because they were kicking too much ass, and apparently that was bad. Toro, Borgos, and Shugesh are a part of Bardock's team, so why not make them playable so we can put them up against the Ginyu Force? Next in line is Azoto. I decided to add Azoto to my fan flick for two reasons. One, this guy is an original drawn character by Toriyama, and two, he's like Shang Tsung. He can morph into any other fighter, so wouldn't it be interesting to have a character in the game that can morph into any fighter during the match? I mean, the possibilities for an ultimate special are endless. Next in line is Ranfan. Now, in Budokai Tenkaichi 3, we were able to play as Nam. Why didn't we get Ranfan? I mean, it was pretty much the perfect moment to include her in the game. Not to mention, that game had over 100 characters and barely any of them were female. We got Chi Chi, but only as a kid. She fought as an adult before, so why not adult Chi Chi? And Renfen was a sexy fighter, so this would have been great to pin her up against adult Chi Chi. Unless we put her up against Videl or Ander 18, then she'd get wrecked. But nonetheless, I'd still like to have the option to play as her so I can distract the opponents with boobs. Yes, I remember Ranfan for a reason. Next we got Nikki, Ginger, and Sancho. I told myself I would not include anyone related to Garlic Jr., but to be honest, if I had to include anyone, then I would clearly skip those abominations from the Garlic Jr. saga. What were their names again? Salt, Pepper, Vinegar? But yeah, I can honestly say that Nikki, Ginger, and Sancho weren't that bad. They actually had some character put into them. Nikki was like a retarded rabbit, but he still had some humor in him. Ginger was like the leader of the three, and Sancho was like the dumb, bulky one. Only his design reminded me of the old monsters from Dragon Ball, like the ones in the movie Dragon Ball Sleeping Princess and Devil's Castle. Plus their fight scenes were very entertaining, and I like how they can increase their strength and whip out swords from their forearms. Now we got Bojack's crew, and just like with Bardock, only Bojack's female companion was allowed to join most games. You know you got other members in the team that are stronger than Xanya, right? In fact, Kagu is the only one who was able to transform just like Bojack. Why wasn't he included in any of the games yet? Again, here we got a team that can be put against other teams. In fact, why not make the next Dragon Ball Z or Super game concentrate a little more on team fights? Because most characters on this list are part of teams. Turles' crew, Bojack's crew, Bardock's crew, Garlic Jr.'s crew, Dr. Cushion's crew, you name it. I think the next game would kick ass if the main focus was set on teams. I mean, when has a tag mode or tag team ever failed? Next, we got the Supreme Kai's. We have played as Supreme Kai before, I think also Kibito, but maybe not, maybe it was just Kibito Shin. But what about the rest of the Supreme Kai's? We've seen them put up a good fight against Kid Buu. I like their designs, I like their special moves, especially the one where he can create like a Resident Evil like fence, laser fence to his foes. Imagine doing that in the game. I think he would be undeniably tough. Next one is Lord Chill. I know he wasn't exactly an interesting character, most of these aren't, and Lord Chill is probably the least favorite villain, but he is a frost demon and he was only seen in his first form. He died without even showing us any other transformations. 
Okay, he was that fucking weak, but what about coming up with some transformations for him in the next game? Wouldn't that make him an interesting character? That would be like in Beast Wars where most of the characters got a transmetal form, except for Rhinox, but when they included him in the game, they gave him a transmetal form, and that was awesome. Same thing with Wasp Knight. So even though a character never did change in the series, you can still add improvements in the game. Like when Tien fused with Yamcha in the Budokai series. It will work out. Next, Dr. Kachin's androids. Their names are Misukatsun, what the f... Ebifori, Ebifuria, and Kishime. I gotta say, these are the most random names I've ever heard in Dragon Ball Z. I gotta mention that because DBZ names tend to come out of a fruit or a vegetable pun. Anyways, these androids have quite a lot of potential. And as I've mentioned before, Dr. Crutchin can create a more advanced android than Dr. Jiro. Just imagine if he didn't put all his work and effort into Dr. Wheelow, then chances are he'd be going places. Now, if I was given the chance to play as, say, Miso Katsun, then I could use stretching abilities like Mr. Fantastic. Imagine that kind of skill in DBZ match. Or what about Ebifuria? The man with a diaper. I don't recall him having any particular skills. Oh yeah, he can freeze his opponents. This guy could be like Sub-Zero and leave the opponents open for a massive strike. Then we got Kishime, the one who wraps electric vines or I'm not sure how to describe those. Okay, he's kind of like Omega Red. So seriously, why not include these guys next time you want to spice up a DBZ game? They may be forgotten characters, but these are characters that could make the next game a lot more interesting. You're pretty much adding Mr. Fantastic, Sub-Zero, and Omega Red in a DBZ game. Next we got Lord Slug's crew. Okay, this one isn't really necessary. I would just like the opportunity to take these guys down myself. Okay, no, that's not the real reason why they're here, otherwise I would have to include Sugar and Spice or whatever they are in the list. But the reason why I like to play as them in the game is because, again, they do have different abilities. Like Metamancha, he can summon little frogmen to attach onto the host and absorb his or her energy. That sounds cool. Or what about Angela? This guy can stretch his arm. Oh, wait, that's what Piccolo does already. Well, I'd still like to include these guys so that I can put them up against another team like the Ginyu Force or the Armored Squadron. Or the next group in line, Turles' Crusher Corps. As I've said before in my review for the movie Tree of Might, the Crusher Corps was a group of interesting looking fellows, but we weren't given any background to any of them, including Turles, so the movie lacked a lot of potential, but the characters still look rather badass. To me, they see an evil version of the Z Fighters. I mean, they even have their evil Goku lookalike. They have two short guys like Krillin and Chiaotzu, and they have a cyborg like Android 18. Plus, imagine the kind of moves that you can give these guys. They didn't perform anything special during their fights, so in the next game, they can be given new and creative specials, whether they suck or not. Next, we got Abo and Kato. So, Turbo was a playable character in Raging Blast 2, even though he never fought. But that's okay, the more the merrier. But Abo and Kato were a good pair of fighters, and I believe they deserve a shot in the next DBZ game. Granted, I love team specials, so this should be no surprise, and we can even match them up against Freezer to really test out who would win between the two. I'm not sure whether Tarbo meant that they are just as strong as Frieza in his first form, or at his full power. Can't tell since Tarbo never really seemed to know about Frieza's transformations. But other than that, I'd like to see these guys fight and fuse to become Avocado. That's their fusion name, that should clearly be it. Last we have Jean, Goku's mother. So Jean has only been seen in the short manga Dragon Ball Minus. And like I said, characters don't really need to fight in order to be playable. I mean, Bulma was planned to be playable in the Budokai series, and fans loved it. So even if Jean isn't a fighter, I'd like to play as her and see what kind of moves she could perform. Like Fasha, like how she became a playable character in Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3, and they gave her her own special moves, which all turned out great. So if they did the same for Jean, I think a lot of us would want to play as Goku's mom and obviously include giving her a Super Saiyan form, or Super Saiyan forms. We've given all Super Saiyan forms to most Saiyan characters already, so don't use any excuses like, she can't go Super Saiyan, she's not even a fighter. Oh yeah, well what about Vegeta in his Super Saiyan 3 form in Raging Blast 2? Can't bitch about that, huh? Why complain? More transformations means we'll eventually get to see Nappa and Raditz how they look like if they were Super Saiyans. Anyways, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, put a thumbs up. And if there are any other videos you'd love to request, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you want a shout-out, a video request, or you want to ask me a question, I strongly recommend you post it on my Facebook page or Twitter. 
And if you want to see more of my videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out a lot. Plus, you'll be the first to watch the newest video. This is Score saying, have an awesome day. Thank you.